Hello. Uh, if you're watching this, hopefully a year seven pupil at St. Patrick's at the moment. Uh, this video is going to be a quick introduction and recap, hopefully for most of you, about how to use MathSwatch. So both for revision, because you should have uh, exams coming up at the end of your first half term, at the first term, and also you'll have exams coming up at summer. But also MathSwatch is something we can use for our for helping us with our homework, or even helping us for uh, things that we've been doing in lessons. So it might be that we struggle with something in lesson and we want to have a bit more practice at it, or want to have uh, MathSwatch explain it to us using the videos. Or it might be that you keep getting a question wrong on your homework and your teachers suggested you have a look at it on MathSwatch, or even you think it's a really good idea for you to have a look at it yourself. So I'm going to go through a few of the basics of that. I'm also going to talk about how we can revise for our exams using the lists, the revision list that our teachers will have given us. And also once you finish your exam, uh, you'll get a feedback sheet, uh, which you'll partially fill in your teacher will have made for you. And I'll show you how you can use that to help you with that as well. So uh, right now you should see uh, MathSwatch on screen. I've logged in as a student. So this is exactly the sort of screen you should see when you first log in. Now, if your teacher has assigned you work, this is where this will uh, turn up. Uh, we, as a general rule, don't set many homework assignments. We might set the odd revision assignment or a small task, but as you well know, uh, your general homework at St. Patrick's will be our 20 question booklet. So, uh, first thing I'm gonna show you then is just where, the, where we find the videos and uh, interactive questions that we can have a look at. So, you navigate along here on the top where it says videos. Uh, we should be selected on key stage three, as we are seven. And there's a couple of filters that we can use here. So we've got filter by different difficulties. So that sort of goes from easy to hard topics. I wouldn't worry too much about that for now. And I'd probably leave that on um, all. Uh, so similarly with topics, you can filter by different topics there. Again, I'd probably leave that on all because most of the things we're going to be looking at today is going to be where we've got specific things. But it might be that on your homework, when you've just started doing something and on uh, you want a little bit more practice at it. So for example, it might be that it's collecting like terms. And the great thing about our homework booklets, as I'm sure you know, is that on the front cover of it, it's got each topic broken down. So our homework booklets will consist of 10 different topics and it should all be things we're familiar with, but it might be that there's something on there that we need to do a little bit more practice of. So for example, it might have collecting like terms, which is one of the first algebra topics we'll explore in year seven. Uh, so if I want to look at that, I could just start to type in the word collecting for like terms. If I select that, I've got my video here, which is a 10 minute video. Uh, so I'll just play you a little bit of that just to demonstrate what that's like. So we've got the video here. Size times two, add four times two. Now I'm just going to mute that video. So you've got full explanation of what topic entails from sort of basic to more advanced types of questions. And I'll just skip through the video just to show you what this will look like. Now, there'll be sections like this where sh where MathWatch will give you some example questions to have a go at, where you can pause the video, have a go at them, and then when you press play again, it will reveal the answers. So we've got that as a really good uh, option for us if we wanted a little bit of extra help with our homework. Now, main purpose for today though is for looking specifically at how we can use MathSwatch for revision. So I'm gonna switch screens now and just share with you this screen so for most of us we're going to have exams coming up at the end of your first term and your class teacher will probably have given you a sheet like this which tells you topics which are going to be coming up on your exam and next to them here you're going to have this section which says clip number so i'm just going to show you how we can use that clip number to navigate MathSwatch. so for example on here i've got bid maths is one of my topics and the clip number next to it is m20 now, you should all have been given one of these sheets. If you have not been given one, speak to your teacher and they'll be able to give you a little bit of direction about, about that. So I've said N20 now, where it says search, I can type in N20, I can click on that. And again, I've got the video. So just like that, that algebra collecting like terms video, I've got a video which is all about bod mass <coughs> or bid mass. And again, follows a similar pattern. There'll be an explanation. There'll be some examples in there there'll be some questions for us to have a go at with answers attached. So a couple of ones to have a go at. So a really great uh, opportunity for us to practice some of those. Now, if you watch that video and you're happy with the questions you've done there, at the top of this video, you'll have this section here, which is interactive questions. Now, interactive questions is just that. There are questions here which 
automatically answer, which we can answer, which will automatically mark for us. So for example, in your standard questions, so we've got questions along the top here, standard questions, question one, there's two options here. You might want to have a think about this question yourself, but we sh if we're applying bid mass, which we always do, uh, we will be doing four times two is eight, eight plus three is 11. So I can input my answer and I can click submit answers. Now I'm going to get one out of two for that, which it shows me there. And you can even do that as you go. So for the next one, three plus four is seven, seven times two is 14. So you can even check as you go. And MathWatch tells you if you're getting answer, uh, these correct or not. So it might be that you choose to go and have a go at that first. If you're getting all the questions right, maybe you don't need to watch the video. It's up to you how you approach that in terms of interactive questions after the video or interactive questions before the video. What I would suggest is working your way through and making sure you get onto the harder questions because the harder questions are along the top here. So for example, we'll have some different sorts of questions. Now there's a couple of things you can see with MathWatch. We've got the this question here is non-calculator and we can see some information about uh, how successful people are. So when we get to some of the hardest questions, you might notice that the success rate drops down on some of the harder topics. So if it's something you're struggling with, but you know it's that only 50% of people are getting it right, that's kind of telling you that actually this is quite a difficult topic and a lot of people similar to you are struggling there. So in terms of revision then, that's a really useful strategy. So just flicking back to that worksheet we were just looking at that your teachers will have given you, it might be that we're just picking a cup, but we're picking each topic and working our way through it. So it might be that you want to uh, pick a topic and work at it for half an hour and then move on to the next topic for half an hour. It might be that you decide to pick a topic, work through it for a shorter amount of time, five minutes, check how you're doing with it, if you're getting a few questions right, move on to the next one. And then the next day, come back and do the same thing. And that way you're revisiting things. And that's actually a really useful way for you to practice topics and keep revisiting because that helps us to remember topics that we might forget about. So for example, if I was looking at a more difficult topic on here, and this is probably something that we most of us won't be covering at year seven, but it might be that I can search for a more difficult topic. Like that. And again, it might be that I think I remember how to do this topic, so I've decided to not watch the video first. I'm going to test if I do remember it. So I might click on the interactive question first. I might read through the question and I go, yeah, I think I know how to do that. I think the answer is 6.5. I submit that. And if I get it right, then you might think, well, actually, if I can do that one, maybe I could try a harder standard question. Maybe I'll try a harder question. And if I get those right, maybe I think to myself, well, I don't need to watch that video. That actually seems to be a topic that I'm fairly comfortable with. And if you can work through all the questions and do that, then you can sort of tick that question off your list. Now, it's up to you to then think about, well, is that probably still going to be something that's going to be useful for me to look at again in a week's time, just before, like just before the exam, so that to make sure it's fresh in my memory. So in terms of revising for our exam that's coming up, that's what I'd be recommending, how to use MathSwatch with those interactive questions. Now you might have noticed there is also the option when we're on this video to do a worksheet. So there is this option as well. By all means, you can do that. The only issue with the worksheets is it doesn't have the answers attached. So for me personally, I would recommend the interactive questions because it's giving you that uh, option to get that immediate feedback so you know if you're getting it, getting it right or wrong. Right, the next thing I want to speak to you about is after you've done your exam, you're going to get your paper back. Hopefully you've done really well, but in all likelihood, there'll be some questions that you've got wrong. That's the nature of tests. I wouldn't be expecting them to go to be getting 100%. Uh, most people will get at least a few things wrong because there's going to be some challenging questions on that test. And it might be there's things you've not visited recently uh, and so you've forgotten. Or it might be there's hard versions of things that you have done and so you want to try, try some more of those. So I'm just going to show you what you'll be given by your teacher to help you with that. So after you've done the exam, you're going to get something that looks something like this. So it'll be it's called the year seven QL8 at the top there. Now you're going to fill part, part of this in. It's going to have your name on it and we're going to fill in basically smiley face or sad face, can we do that topic? So for example, if you got question one right, and your teacher's going to go through all this with you. If you've got question one right, you'd be putting a smiley face. So the way we're going to use this is we're going to look for the topics that we've got a sad face for that we've either got wrong or we've got less than half marks on. And again, we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to look at the clip number, which is the final column, and we're going to practice the things we got wrong. One of the things I always say to my classes, one of the things I say to parents when they've seen them at parents' evenings or they've come in for any of our parent forums, 
The most important thing about whenever you do a homework or an exam is not the stuff you got right. The stuff you got right is brilliant. You can do that. That's great. But it's the stuff you got wrong because that's how you improve. By focusing on things you got wrong and addressing them and doing something about it by going on maths watch, watching a video, trying some interactive questions, we ensure that the next time we see that topic, when it comes up on an exam or a homework again, we're improving our score. And that's what our time at St. Patrick's is always going to be about, about improving every time. Because nobody is perfect at everything straight away. Nobody experiences success at everything they do. It's part of learning is getting things wrong. And an important part of that is then doing something about it. So from this worksheet here, for example, let's say I got question, uh, let's say I got question 5A wrong working the coordinates. So I can, again, just type, I don't need to worry about what the topic is called here. I can just type in the clip number. So it's a really fast and efficient way for me to navigate MathsWatch. So my clip number here is 1AB. So let's just have a look at that on Maths Watch. So again, in a similar way, I'll type in one, that was it, A, one, B, A, one, B. I can click on that. Again, I've got the option to watch the video, to practice the questions that are a part of the video, to pause it, to mark them. And I've got the option to do the interactive questions. And again, I can work through my standard questions along the top and I can work through my hardest questions here. Final thing I wanted to show you on here is just the My Progress section. So when you've done all that, one of the things you can do is actually just click on My Progress and just see what interactive questions you've actually completed. And you can actually scroll down and see what's been done and what hasn't. Uh, hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully it's something that you'll be able to go away and use. Maths Watch is something we're going to use all the way through uh, from year seven through to year 11. You're going to use it every time we do a test for a revision, every time we do a test for feeding back and improving our test scores. We're going to use it to help us with homeworks and to help us with any classwork. It's something that your teacher's going to talk about at every parent's evening they go to probably, and your parents are going to be told about at any parent forums and things like that. So it's really important that you can get logged in on that. Just a reminder about your username. Your username will generally be your initial, your surname, at SBRCHS and your password will be SBRCHS. So I'll just show you what that would look like. So for example, my initial is S, my surname is Ladley, at SPRCHS and my password is SPRCHS, all lowercase. There is no dot, that's one of the most common mistakes people make. And just to remind, SBRCHS stands for St. Patrick's Roman Catholic High School. If you have any questions, please ask your maths teacher who will be happy to help or ask me and I'm sure I can help you with that. If equally you've forgotten your password or it doesn't seem to work, uh, ask your teacher and they'll be able to tell you. There are one or two exceptions to that general format. So usually if you've got a brother or sister who's got the same initial as you, then your username won't follow that pattern. So it might be that you've got a one at the end of it. So it might be that you get S Ladley one or two or three just to make your username unique. So, like I said, any questions about that, ask your maths teacher, uh, but it is something we should, that we are expected to be using all the way through St. Patrick's. Thank you. Thank you.